Okay, so before we uh, get into the design part of all of this, I want you to be thinking about what it is that we're doing, okay? Um, I kind of, I threw what, what I'm trying to create is a, a, not, not too much work, but it's kind of a lot of work, right? You guys are shredding an entire design process in three weeks. And you have to do renders at two different scales. It's not just modeling your building and then trying to figure it out and make it work. You're modeling a building full scale and trying to make it work. And then you're also modeling a model of your building and trying to make it work in like a studio setting. So you need to think about you know like how you want to set that up and how you want to work through the process. So um, this is this is kind of me, you know, sort of lobbing it to you, I guess. Um, the 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 process that I envision you're going to go through, and this is purely a suggestion at this stage, okay? But it is the way that I'm going to present the work. And so I think it might be helpful, unless you guys have another way of doing things, to follow along. So um, we have this model, which is currently modeled at full scale. We need a studio size model as well. Um, so the way that I would typically do something like this is I would keep a full scale model and I would actually develop my studio scale model at a smaller scale all in the same model all at one time. That way, whatever I'm modeling here, um, up here, uh, at the full scale, all I need to do is just group it, scale it, throw it into my studio setting as if I had like a giant shrink ray and I just took my whole building, shrunk it down, and you know, put it into the studio, right? That's basically it. So um, we're, I'm going to kind of walk you through setting that up. Uh, a few things that might be considered best practices um, in order to make sure that something isn't so distracting um, when you're rendering at the smaller scale. And then we're really just going to kind of have at it. Okay, so um, one thing that I, I think uh, you guys need to consider as you're developing your design is um, this, this doesn't work for all designs. And I'm not saying that you have to do this... Um, I'm not saying you have to do this up front, but sometimes certain sites have sort of inherent viewing angles, and it might help for you to at least save a few camera angles that you suspect might be valuable to you um, early on in the process. So um, there's really nothing wrong with just kind of getting down into your model and saying, this looks like something I might use later. Right, and you can kind of save that, and then you can begin to develop it perspectively. Okay, so I, I personally like to work in perspective and rendering quite frequently. Like when I'm when I'm designing at work, I'll I'll have my you know like Revit or whatever I'm working on or Rhino like this, and I'm looking at it in in uh, parallel projection or axonometric or something like that, and then I have Lumion on right next to it, and I'm looking at everything in, in an actual real-time render pretty much at all times, okay? So um, uh, I guess just be considering that. Um, but really, I guess, you know, the, the only other thing we need to set up is the studio model, okay? So I want you guys to set that up at the actual real scale. Okay, it doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it off to the side. You can put it sort of like tucked behind some of your other buildings. And in fact, I think that's what I'm going to do here. Because if I put it back here in this little alleyway, I don't think it's ever going to show up in my actual render. Okay. Um, so how I'm going to do this is, um, let me go back to top view. Whoop. Not that. Turn my heads up off. There we go. Um, so you kind of need to start controlling your um, your folders a little bit, or I mean your uh, your layers a little bit. So what I did in this file is I set up all of my um, like high level like massing things. Uh, I sort of name them right now, but as I'm starting to develop these other ones, I'm going to rename them with a prefix that helps me organize those layers appropriately. So um, what you might want to do is set this up with like FS for full scale. And then you can do the same thing for, um, for you could do like studio scale, like SS for um, any of the studio scale things that we're going to do. So I'm going to create a new layer here for SS, and I'm going to call it room. 
And really that's just going to be the generic model that's going to actually set the room for, for, for how I'm going to model this thing. And um, before I go any further, while you guys are sort of doing something similar, I'll pull up just a, a sample image. And really, I, you know, I, you guys see me Google things quite frequently, and there's a very good reason why, right? Because if you Google something and you see a likeness in, in the, the algorithm of what actually comes up in your results, then that's a pretty, you know, telling thing to, uh, I think it's like a, a flag that would signify that there's something really significant there that you could look into more. So when I Google this, uh, I'm going to Google studio photography lighting. And you're going to see a very common thread when it comes up. Okay. There's not much variation here. Right? And that's because studio photography lighting has kind of been boiled down to almost an exact science. Right? You have sort of a formula that you need certain types of lights, where they go, how you bounce light around the space in order to create the type of environment that you want to create. So in keeping with you know, trying to emulate the experts, this is what we're going to set up. We're going to set up a little studio room and we're going to put our model in that studio room and we're going to light it like it's a studio. Does that make any sense? Okay. Um, I tend to think that's a compelling argument just to Google it, right? Um, so that SS room is what we're creating. So I'm just going to go here and uh, I'm just going to say, uh, let's do at, uh, let's just make it 10 feet by 10 feet. Uh, I drew it a little bit below the plane here. There we go. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to extrude that. I'll extrude it, uh, let's just make it 10 feet tall. So think of this as really a photo booth. And if it counts for anything, it's very similar to what we created before when we were doing our one point perspective, is it not? <clears throat> okay, the only difference here I think is um, we're we're not really trying to create a space that, uh, uh, what, how do I want to say this? We're not trying to create a space that feels like a space. What we're trying to create is a space that feels like it lacks space so that the object that we um, are photographing really tends to sort of float around and becomes the main attraction, right? It's the main event. Um, and you don't get distracted by the floorboard or you don't get distracted by the fact that you can see the edge of where the floor meets the wall. And so what we're emulating here is the bend in the surface, right? That, that blending of the floor plane and the wall. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fill it, radius all those corners in that space. Okay. So we can do a... Um, Yes. Yes, I am. So we can do fillet surface, and we're going to um, change. You can change the radius to something that's, you know, fairly extreme, actually. It doesn't have to be um, totally perfect. But So we're going to go that to that, that to that, that to that, that to that. Oh, that doesn't like me. I'm really bad at doing these, actually. I'll fix those hedges. Oops. Um, you kind of have to yank it to the side and then fill it it again. Oops. Well, that'll do for now. I'm not the expert at these corner things. That's why Jeff does this class now. Um, That'll do for now. I'll fix those corners later on. But um, I think what you really need to do is sort of trim it back. Let me do it this way. I'm going to grab this edge. I'm going to um, pull that edge up. I'm going to pull this edge over. And then I will trim. And I'm going to. Select this as a cutting object, trim that out. 
Okay, you need to do that for all of these. That's the unfortunate part, I think. You kind of have to grab this edge, pull it up like that, whoops. It's a little bit of a laborious process. There's probably some kind of filleting command that I'm not practiced in anymore. There we go, Pull over there. And then I do trim. So like this is the cutting object and then trim that off. Okay, so here's uh, that corner that we're trying to you know fix and sort of revise. Um, you can do this a couple of different ways. I'm not sure if fillet will work after it's been trimmed. No. Revolve will work though. So we can say revolve. We're going to start the revolution axis here. We're going to go straight up and we're going to go from that point to that point. Okay. So that gets us that little rounded corner. Okay. I'll, I'll sort of walk through that a little bit more slowly with you guys later on. Don't worry about it right now. It's not mission critical. Um, for those of you who are a little less experienced with Rhino, we'll fix it up later. Um, and actually, I'm not even going to bother with that other corner right now. I'll fix it later. Okay. So um, anyway, this is really the kind of space that we're trying to create. Don't worry so much about the top plane, right? Because you know, studio models, they're going to be pretty small. We're going to light it from above, and we're going to keep our camera pretty low. So there shouldn't really be too many conflicts with the roof condition, okay? Um, outside of that, I think one of the things we want to do with this is make sure that we're not getting any graphic glitches with the floor plane below. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with um, selecting this thing and just lifting it up a little bit off the ground. Okay, that's perfectly okay. All right, so um, the uh, how far do I want to go in this one? Oh, this is already on twelve minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, stop this one, and then I'm gonna go into like setting up the the actual entourage of the space here in the next video.